Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I am going to be showing you my attempt at making the Night King, who is a White Walker in the Game of Thrones series. I did not want to make this cake. It's a little more detailed and intense than I'm used to, but I was challenged to try, so I did my very best. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like it. Let's get right into it. So I've made myself a template of the bust and the head. I'm going to link the picture that I used below as a reference. I literally just traced out the features and then cut them out on this piece of cardstock. I have two 8 inch square vanilla cakes and I'm going to be cutting the head out of those. I'm just keeping all of my off cuts to make cake pops. You don't want to throw that away. That's gold right there. You can put it in a Ziploc bag and just pop it in the freezer for later. I'm adding some chocolate buttercream with my small offset spatula and then I'm going to pop my second layer right on top of that. I have one more 8 inch cake and then I'm using some of my off cuts to kind of Tetris together the right shape so I can cut out a layer of my bust. So I'm going to arrange that on my board. I'm just doing one layer of the bust because I want it to be set back a bit. I want the head to appear like it's stuck out. I want to round out the face, so with my little knife here, I'm going to go around the edge of my cake, just cutting at an angle. I did the same thing for the shoulder area of my bust, and as it got towards the edge, I just sloped it down a little closer to the board. I marked a line where I want the eyes to sit, and then I'm going to create a divot so that they're going to be a little more set back. I've chosen to go with some chocolate ganache for this because it's going to set really firm and help me when I'm sculpting the features later. So I'm adding a thin layer all over my entire cake to lock in the crumbs and then I'm waiting until that sets before adding one more layer and just trying to smooth it out as best I can. Because I'm going to be adding so much detail it doesn't need to be super smooth so I'm just leaving it at this stage. Modeling chocolate became like my BFF for sculpted cakes after I made Toothless. So I'm going to be using that today as my medium instead of fondant. If you do want to use fondant, you can go ahead and do that. I just really like the blendability of modeling chocolate. Also, modeling chocolate tastes really good. So for those of you who have people in your life who hate fondant, modeling chocolate is a nice substitute. I'm not going to be using modeling chocolate for like every video going forward, but for a lot of my sculpted cakes, you're going to see way more modeling chocolate. I wanted to build up some of the features before I cover the whole face, so I'm adding some modeling chocolate on either side for the cheekbone area. I'm also adding a piece for the lip and then a piece down the center for the nose. I'm blending the edges of my pieces down into my ganache because I don't want to have any really harsh lines and that's why it helps that ganache set so firm because if you were using buttercream, I think it would be way more of a mess. Once I was happy with the placement, while it was still soft, I rolled out a larger piece of modeling chocolate and I just draped that over my entire face. I worked to push all the air out from any little pockets underneath that modeling chocolate and just framed the side of the face and then cut away the excess around the chin and the sides. So now while the modeling chocolate is still soft, I'm going to start establishing the features and if I thought like that the mouth was a little bit too high or the nose is a little bit too high, I just work to move those around and you can see why modeling chocolate is so handy for this because it doesn't like rip or tear like fondant does. I mean if you were like gouging your fingers into it, it would, but it just allows you to move stuff around a little bit and you're going to see I do a lot of just fixing and tweaking and reshaping throughout the video. So I tried to work in sections focusing on the main features. So right now I'm doing the eyes, the cheekbones, and the nose. I've marked in where I roughly want the eyes to sit and then I'm trying to get an idea of how the cheekbones are going to be placed. This cake had like phases for me and this was phase one, i.e. blue man group phase <laughs> because that's all I could see while I was doing this part, just blue man group. If I thought a section was too flat, I just went and added more modeling chocolate and then used my tools, my fingers, just to blend the seams out. You can see I've added a piece for the eye and I'm using my balling tool to just really shape around the cheekbone and then mark in where the eye is going to sit. 
I added this triangular shape for the nose and then another piece right underneath there just for the space between the nose and the lip. The very top of your lip, like the cupid's bow area, it is protruding a little bit. I wanted to make sure it wasn't like a divot. I was just going for a rough placement at this point. I've never done anything super realistic, like human wise. I mean, I know he's not a human, but you know what I mean. So I just wanted to get all of the main features down, like the nose. Here I'm adding two balls into each eye. And I kept periodically going in with my balling tool because it was nice and smooth so it was helping me blend out those seams and it was great for tucking right underneath that cheekbone area and making it look super hollow because the guy's dead. I added two snakies of that modeling chocolate below and above the eye and then just blended the seams down. He has a pretty heavy brow bone, so I added them on either side and tried to arrange them so that they were slightly overlapping the very top of the eye. I ended up going a little bit ham on the hollowed out area of the cheek. So I just patched that with a couple pieces and I also built out the bone a little bit more on the side. You're gonna see, I basically just went back in and fixed things, blended them out, added a little bit more, blended it out. It was kind of hard to show this in tutorial form because for every like 30 seconds of me fidgeting with it, it was like in reality an hour of me just obsessing over not messing this up horribly. I marked in some frowny lines around the mouth and then started to shape his nose. These soft clay tools were really great for this. I do have similar ones linked below. I have everything linked below, all the recipes as well. And I'm just starting to focus on each feature and make them more detailed. So I'm trying to shape the nostrils and also just the side and the bridge of the nose. He has quite the voluptuous bottom lip, so I added a snaky of my chocolate and then just lightly blended it out. I added another piece on top, but he didn't really have a lot going on in the top lip department, so I blended most of that out up towards the nose. I bulked out the forehead a little bit and added two little bean shapes of that modeling chocolate in between his eyebrows to really enhance the angry look. Before I moved on to the more defined details in the face, I just took my time here to really blend out a lot of these seams. The heat of my hands and the smoothness of my gloves was working really great for me, but if you find that your chocolate is setting really hard before you get a chance to work on it, you can use a blow dryer just for a couple seconds to soften a bit. Just be very careful with this because obviously heat, chocolate, too much, bad idea. His face is also very textured, so you don't need to worry about getting it crazy smooth. Here I'm starting to add in some of the lines. He has a lot of lines on his face. I was just going off of my reference photo. He has these like cracked shapes all over his forehead. So once I marked out where they were gonna go, I went back in with my soft clay tool and just made the lines less perfect looking and added little tiny pieces as well. I didn't want like perfect squares and triangles over the place. It's supposed to look pretty rough. I crumpled up some tin foil and just pressed that gently into my chocolate to add even more texture. I moved on to the rest of the lines on the face, on the nose, underneath his eyes. He has a lot of lines trailing up from his mouth onto the cheekbone. So I pretty much just did the same thing, mapped out where they were going to sit and then went over that with my soft fondant tool to deepen them. I rolled out different sized cone shapes for the horns on his head. A couple of different pictures I was looking at, like he had less horns and other ones he had more. So I did use them as a rough guide, but I ended up just adding basically what I wanted to.
At this point, I went back in, just tweaked a couple last things, shaped his mouth a little bit more. Anything that I didn't really like, I took the time here to fix it because this was basically it for the face. Moving down to the bust, I've marked an area where his collar is gonna be. I cut out thin strips of my gray modeling chocolate and I'm adding them on either side and I'm overlapping them ever so slightly. I marked out where the shoulder plates are going to end and then right below that line, I added a thin strip of gray modeling chocolate that just met in the middle. They didn't completely like join, but that's okay because it's gonna be covered. If you're having a hard time getting your modeling chocolate to stick to your ganache, you can just spritz it with a little bit of water. I rolled out another big piece of gray fondant and I'm draping that over one side of the bust and I'm gonna cut it so that the bottom is slightly overlapping that gray band and I want the top to slightly overlap the collar as well. I cut off the excess where the shoulder ended so I had a nice sharp angle and then I cut off the excess at the top just where it met the board. I did add two pieces on either side and as well as the bottom but I just forgot to show that part. Sorry. I filled in the bottom piece and then when I was cutting it away again I wanted this to just slightly overlap that band. I added some texture using my tin foil, and then with my fondant tool, I indented a line in the very center of each of those bands. I used my template to cut out his chest thingy, his emblem, I'm not sure what that is. And I also added another piece on top and marked in those lines with my soft fondant tool. He's got these little rectangular shapes all over most of his armor, so I'm adding lines of those. I just used water to stick my modeling chocolate together. So now we're gonna start the painting process to bring the character to life. It can be a little bit tricky to paint chocolate with food gel that you've mixed in with some food grade alcohol. It can bead up, so you do have to do a couple layers, I found. You can also use powders if you want to. This is just what I had on hand, like the right colors. So I went this route and if anything like accumulated and it was too crazy, I just dabbed it with a clean paper towel. I'm doing a light wash over his whole face with this blue color, everything except for the eyeballs. With the darker concentration of that blue, I'm hitting all those lines, letting the color just pool in there. I want them to be super prominent. I mix together more of that blue with a little bit of white food coloring and I'm going over all of the areas that would be highlighted. So like the nose, the horns, the forehead, really anywhere where there's going to be the light in between those lines. I stippled over a darker blue just to make it look a little more grungy. This cake is all about layers upon layers upon layers. With straight white food coloring, I'm highlighting the face, so if you do your makeup or watch makeup gurus, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Just like the horns, the bridge of the nose, the cheekbones, the cupid bow area, anywhere the sun would be hitting first. For the eye, I started out with a light blue base, concentrating it a little bit darker on the outside, and then lining it with black. I added the pupil and then pretty much just swirled around some different tones of blue and white. And then taking more of that black, I'm lining the entire upper eye and then bringing that down into the eye bag area. I grabbed my fluffy brush and kind of stippled out the color under his eye as well as contoured his cheeks a little bit and anywhere where the shadows would be really dark.
I'm painting his collar in a wash of dark gray and then highlighting the very edges with some white where the high points are. I stippled that gray over the entire chest piece. Yes, this did take forever and yes, my arm did feel like it wanted to fall off after. And then just like the face, I deepened any shadowy areas with black and highlighted with white. I took some time here as well to score up that band with my X-Acto knife and then I painted the whole thing black. I made sure to add that white around the emblem in the very center of the top of the emblem and also the edges of each of those little rectangle shapes on the chest piece. I added fondant to my board and painted that blue and then the final step was just the ears. I rolled out this long teardrop shape and then attached it to the side and used my modeling tools to kind of match the other ear I had made. I contoured that bad boy the same way I did the face, and then finally, I was done. This was the final result. I know this was a long video. I do apologize, but there was a lot to go over. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.